Hello my fellow Christian fiction lovers, welcome to another video. So I'm not gonna lie, I started reading the book for today's reading vlog and then remembered that I wanted to do a reading vlog for it and I've just been so disorganized in the videos I'm putting out lately. I'm putting out content but I used to have like a whole list and dates that I would film things and edit things and put things out but since I've started college I've just kind of been like hoping I get a video out and I've been pretty good but please forgive me. I, I can't believe I just forgot because I used to be so on top of knowing which books I was going to do reading vlogs for. Nevertheless, I'm 12 chapters into today's book and it's 35 chapters long so I feel like that's a fair break. I can talk about it three different times, you know, 12 chapters in, then 24 chapters, and then at the end. We're gonna roll with it. It won't be my best reading vlog, but <laughs> maybe it will. Who knows? Anyway, today I'm going to be reading, well, continue reading, Daughter of Rome by Tessa Afshar. I was reminded that I was gonna do a reading vlog for this when I saw an old comment on a video of someone saying they were looking forward to seeing it and I was like oh yeah I'm reading that right now I should probably turn on the camera so for those of you who don't know Daughter of Rome follows um, Priscilla and Aquila I'm I think that's how you say his name from the book of Acts I believe and it's biblical fiction and I don't know basically anything about their story. I, I know they were very influential influential in the early church and I think they aided in Paul's ministry. Haven't gotten to that point in the book obviously. Um, right now we're just kind of getting their love story and how they become attracted to one another because Priscilla is a Roman and Aquila is a Jew and they're both Christian, but Aquila was very like, I don't want, like, I don't want to be attracted to a non-Jew. Like, I want to marry a Jewish woman. And he's kind of having to get past that. Obviously, he will because we know they get married. But these first 12 chapters have really just been, like, them meeting and becoming attracted to one another and kind of getting to this point where they recognize that they are definitely interested in one another. And I found that very interesting. There's, it's so sweet the way that like in their different perspectives, the way they talk about one another. It's so cute and I love it. And it's kind of wholesome to have some sweet romance in a biblical fiction setting. I just love that because it, it reminds me that like humans have always had feelings, you know? <laughs> like girls have always gotten butterflies about guys and vice versa and that kind of thing and it's just super sweet and also the book is not like overly romance heavy which is nice it focuses a lot on so far it's focused a lot on priscilla coming to know jesus which also love 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 it i love reading about early christians coming to know christ and how like they didn't have the bible and all of that and uh just the ministry of the early church was, I mean, it's why we have the current church. I love reading about it in story form. So anyway, those are my thoughts so far. Mostly positive. I don't, I, I mean, the writing style is great. It's very clear and easy to understand. And yeah, those are my thoughts 12 chapters through. I will get back to you probably when I'm 24 chapters through because that just seems like the cleanest break to me. I don't know. Why does my brain work like that? Anyway. See you later. All right, we are 24 chapters in and I really, really like this book. Like I haven't, I haven't read a biblical fiction in a while and I forgot how much I just love the atmosphere of, or the this atmosphere, the setting of a biblical fiction, a really well-written one. And this one is so well-written and I feel like it's, appropriate with like how historically accurate it is alongside how how much creative license the author uses when describing and explaining events and people that you know actually existed obviously it is fiction so there has to be 
some elements that are imagined but I think there's also a lot that actually did happen and just the weaving of the two is spectacular and I really appreciate it. It's no surprise that the characters do fall in love and get married. Just I don't feel like that's a big spoiler at all because it's in the literal Bible. So I will say that the way that they get engaged and the way that Aquila proposes is like the most over dramatic proposal scene I have ever read and like it was so sweet the way that he like declared his love and they'd kind of gotten into an argument before that and he basically or not an argument but some things had happened and they weren't really on speaking terms and the way he just kind of so over dramatically like it's like I love you and I'm sorry and like marry me it's just I don't know I just found it so funny and I was like there's no way that would have happened that's the only thing that I was kind of like <laughs> you're kidding me right now um but that besides that one scene everything else has been super realistic and I feel like it actually would have happened <laughs> I just could not stop like laughing at this one scene and how over dramatic they were being <laughs> I didn't realize how much it made me laugh until I started filming I guess <laughs> so I was reading the back because I don't want to spoil too much but this is kind of on the back basically at one point Priscilla and Aquila are uh, banished from Rome which is where they met and fell in love and got married and they had been ministering in the early church also love the inclusion of how both Priscilla and Aquila were like ministering and Priscilla was able to help minister because she was of Roman descent and like she knew how to like minister to the Romans whereas the Jews like they just knew how to relate to the Jews um and Priscilla really knew how to minister to the hearts of the Gentiles and I just loved how this book is showing like both are were so crucial and are so crucial of you just you know how to minister to a certain set of people because you understand their set of previous values and you understand where they're coming from because at one point you were coming from that same standpoint and I just thought that inclusion I, I think it is so good and so well represented that it just really shows how God uses our gifts in such different ways for his glory. I haven't read a book in a while that is so rich in scriptural truths. It could be because it is biblical fiction and we are talking a lot about the early church, but I just seriously, I haven't read a Christian fiction of any genre in a long time that is so rock solid in the way it presents the gospel and it's teaching me things and I'm loving it. And it's making me want to go read Acts, which I am hoping to read soon in my personal devotions, but like I really want to get into Acts and read about the early church because it was such a foundational time and I'm, I'm just loving reading about it. So Priscilla and Aquila are no longer in Rome. They've been banished and it's kind of interesting how they're banished. I, I The creative license displayed is very interesting in that aspect. I'm not saying I disagree with it. It's just a little, it's interesting. And I did, definitely didn't see the story going there, and I'm hoping there's some resolution between some certain characters, though I don't know how that could play in with such little time left in the story. But now they're in Corinth, and they just met Paul, like the Paul who wrote over half of the New Testament. So that's really cool. I'm eager to see where their ministry in Corinth goes next, where the story goes. It's got a lot of really cool twists and turns. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, those are my thoughts. I will see you once I am finished. Plot twist, I actually finished Daughter of Rome last night, but I was, it was late, I was tired, I didn't wanna wake people up, so I didn't talk about it last night, but I did finish it the same day as the last clip in which I spoke, which I don't normally do. Like, I've been really a slow reader lately, but this book just hooked me. And oh my goodness, guys, the ending, it's just, I, I don't have words for it. It was such a good book. And I read, um, I read this book, Jewel of the Nile, also by Tessa Afshar, less than a year ago, I guess. I read it last summer. 
and I really liked it. I thought it was really sweet and really simple, but yet it was still a good book. And I thought like, oh, she just writes simplistic, very sweet, like romantic biblical fiction. But this book, like, it packed a very good punch that was kind of lacking in this one, but this one was, it was just a whole different style, like if that makes sense. So I was expecting this one to resemble Jewel of the Nile, which it didn't, like, and that's a good thing. Both are great books, both are awesome reads, and I recommend both of them, but this one is truly like a sucker punch in your gut for <laughs> like, the reconciliation, the redemption at the end was just so beautiful and so like expected yet unexpected at the same time and I just adored it so so much. One thing I kept realizing the longer I read it is Priscilla and Aquila are characters in Jewel of the Nile. Like the main character in this book like stays in Priscilla and Aquila's home. Also, I just realized one of the characters we're introduced to in this book is the love interest in this book, I think, based on the names. I have a terrible memory. Truly, I do. But also, I read, like, so many books, it's forgivable. So anyway, confusion aside, putting the pieces together aside, highly, highly recommend Daughter of Rome. I am so glad I read it, and it's always interested me, the whole description of it every time I've seen it I'm like I want to read that book like I just know that I'm going to enjoy it so I did go into this book with pretty high expectations and I left satisfied subtract like just a couple of over dramatic scenes in my opinion and this is a really stellar book one of the best biblical fictions I've ever read and I'm a high critic for biblical fiction like I don't just toss out that praise for every biblical fiction I read at least I try not to. Correct me if I'm wrong. So this definitely makes me want to read more Tessa Afshar. This book, I want to give it five stars, but there's just a couple elements to it that make it more like four and a half stars. And I could talk more about that in another video if you want. This I know this is already probably a really long video, but yeah, I I loved it. I definitely want to read more by this author. And those are my thoughts. That's my reading vlog slash review of Daughter of Rome. Please go pick it up. Please. And read it. Because it's lovely. And just... I could keep saying the same things over and over again, but I don't need to do that. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you have read Daughter of Rome or you want to, let me know your thoughts. Let's talk about it in the comments. Please. I'd love to talk to more people about this book. And again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video, whatever that is. Until then, bye!